test. Can you might hear me out there? I can't hear myself. Can you hear me, Matt? All good, Matt. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the July 19th Board of Public Works meeting. Uh, we are broadcasting live and, and streaming through the City of Madison uh, YouTube channel and archiving for public record. So, roll call clerk. Eaglin? Here. Courtney? Here. Carlo? Here. Board, uh, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes from July 6th? So, we'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. The uh, minutes look to be in order. I make a motion we approve the minutes. I'll second the motion. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Under new business, we have a street closing resolution for the Christmas parade. And in Hannah Fagan's absence, we are inviting Keely White to make this request for the Board of Public Works. Good morning. Good morning. So this request is for Main Street to be closing one hour before the parade. The overall closings are the same as years prior in the footprint. Um, the side streets are set to close at 8 a.m. Uh, to allow time for cars to be moved out of the way and to allow the parade lineup to begin before. I will say I like the uh, staging area on the side streets. It, look, it looks like that would work well. Do you, do you anticipate uh, how many uh, different floats and participants in the Christmas parade do you anticipate this year? I am not sure okay. um, at the time, but Hannah may potentially know this. I do not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Will Santa Claus be there? He will. Okay. Fantastic. We know then it's going to be a Christmas, good Christmas for him. Forty. any questions for Keely on the street closing? I, uh, I'm just grateful that all of the Festivals and events are coming back online, and we have a very busy balance of summer and fall. Joe, you want to read the resolution? You have a number four? Yep, this is resolution number 44 2021, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding a street and parking lot closing for the City of Madison Christmas Parade. Whereas there has been a request filed by Hannah Fagan on behalf of the City of Madison for street and parking lot closings in connection with the City of Madison Christmas Parade to be held on Saturday, December 4th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following streets and parking lot shall be closed on Saturday, December 4th, 2021, at the times designated below. Main Street from Jefferson Street to Mill Street from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mill Street between Main Street and 2nd Street from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Jefferson Street between Main Street and 2nd Street from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And 2nd Street between Walnut Street and Jefferson Street from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the parking lot located at the corner of Jefferson and 2nd Streets from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Keely, the only uh, request I have really when I look at this is we have, it looks like uh, at, at, toward the end of the parade where it concludes around Mill, I think around Mill Street, uh, we have Mill Street between First and I'm sorry between Main Street and Second Street closed. Uh, let's just be conscientious that the attic is will be open and operating, yes. and uh, just make sure we're communicating with them so we don't uh, uh, sacrifice parking for people that might a want to visit the parade but also visit uh, mm -hmm. visit the business there. Yes, we'll be very mindful of that. Okay. The communication. Yep. Well. Then I'll move that we approve Resolution 44-2021 as presented. Uh, second the mayor's motion. Any discussion board? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Keith. Crystal Beach contract. Good morning, board. Before you is a contract uh, between the city of Madison and Pool Group for Crystal Beach. Uh, we need to sign this in order to keep the uh, project on schedule. Um, I know there are a couple of blanks um, in the contract. We have a meeting with Pool Group this afternoon to complete the contract, um, but we're asking for your pr approval contingent on review by council. So, Nicole, this, uh, what you attach to the standard AIA document is the actual uh, bid that we awarded to the Pool Group. Yes. 
and then that information is going to be translated into the AIA document, which at that point in time we'll talk about, you know, schedule of, specific schedule of values, and, as well as re retainage provisions. Yes. Um, and I'm assuming it would have liquidated damages in it as well. I know Ed is here. I don't think Ed, you want to make any remarks. So, Nicole, would you like to introduce Ed? Yes. Uh, Ed Curran is our uh, consultant for Seller and is helping uh, work with us and the engineering team on this project. Okay, fantastic. Uh, yeah, Mayor, you're exactly correct. There are some issues with, we want to identify specifically retainage, how we process invoices and, and claims, and make sure we kind of have all those uh, T's crossed and I's dotted in right. the contract. Um, I think there's a little bit of a snag with trying to get the contract filled out with the contractors, so we want to help them kind of get that figured out. But he signed the contract, we got the bid amount in there, um, you know, we'll just kind of work through those issues. Yeah. So. so Ed just pointed out that uh, contractor did sign the contract, and the Board of Public Works did award uh, the bid, uh, award the contract to him, and now it's about documenting it on the AIA document. And Nicole and I talked about the one thing I wanted to, to make sure is that from a timetable, time frame, we know that we're also we're working within, you know, the, the grant period for mm -hmm. Okra, and we're also you know having to manage the uh, the, when we actually close Crystal Beach for the season, right now it's scheduled for July 31st. If it looks like de um, deploying to the site by pool group to start to mobilize to start their work is going to be delayed, uh, let's treat, please try to find that out to see if that would impact the actual closing of Crystal Beach or not. Okay. Happy to answer. And if you guys ask any questions you might have, but uh, I'll ask mine. The time frame is just like it had been presented before. We're going to do some of the work this year through the winter months and stop, and we're going to open again next year. For, or will the work be finished by next year? We kind of anticipate that everything will be finished by the time they pool is ready to open next next summer. One of the reasons that we just to, yeah. you know one of the reasons that we decided to close the pool early this year was so we could go ahead and get started and then have all the, the renovations done in order for a grand reopening in uh, 2022 for, for the new Crystal Beach. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Uh, board, I will make a motion that we approve the AIA uh, contract uh, subject to review by council and final execution by the mayor's office for the Crystal Beach project that had been awarded to the pool group. I'll second the mayor's motion. That's giving you the authority to sign yes, the document. Yes. Any discussion? Nicole or Ed, anything else to add there? Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you Ed. Thank you. Drinking water improvement project. Can't think of anything more important than drinking water. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. Um, I'm going to give you guys a water project rate study update. Um, for the past year, we've been working on a water rate study, as I've mentioned before, and the subsequent water rate increase that will accompany that. And uh, this is needed to address the water infrastructure improvements and rehab needed throughout the city. Uh, the work will primarily take place at the storage tanks, our water treatment plants, and we'll probably operate approximately 22,000 lineal feet of water main within our distribution system. The approximate cost of the work getting done is around 15 million. And uh, the reason I'm giving you an update is because uh, to try to offset some of these costs, uh, over the past few months, a few avenues have become available that we are currently pursuing. One, the first is a SWIFT grant, which is a state water infrastructure fund grant, specifically targeting the water companies located throughout the state. We have applied for and requested a grant in the amount of $5 million. Uh, once the SWIFT people have vetted all the applications, we hope to receive all or a portion of this amount. Um, <clears throat> one of the criteria for following for this SWIFT grant is to have design engineering done by December 31st, 2021. Uh, therefore, we have an amendment today that we would like to present, which I'll have Rob present here in a little bit. Amendment to, number one to our existing agreement with Commonwealth Engineers 
to put us in a position to fulfill our obligations with the SWIFT grant funding group. Uh, and like I said, in a few minutes, we'll have Rob present that. The second avenue we're pursuing, pursuing is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, where we're gonna be requesting financial assistance from Jefferson County in the amount of two and a half million to help keep the water rates as low as possible for the residents of both the city and the county. Uh, the city water department, as you guys probably know, we, uh, we provide water to the people in the city and Rikers Ridge, DuPont, and Canaan. So as our rates increase, their rates increase. So the lower we can keep those, the better it is for everybody pretty much in about two thirds part of the county. Um, and once, once the grants have been finalized, uh, then whether we've gotten money from these two organizations or not, then we'll have a review of the rate study to see what, how that will affect the rates. Um, and as I mentioned before, our last water rate increase was in December of 2008. And that's just to give you a rough idea of where we are and where we're headed and hoping. Brian, you tossed out some big numbers there. Uh, <clears throat> the, okay, the, the, the estimated project cost 15 million. Right, it's, it's currently around 13 million, but with all the things going on and the increased cost of everything, we got that an estimate a while back. And we'd rather say the 15 million just to make sure, because I don't really want to tell you 13 million and it end up being 14 and a half. Yeah. Uh, but that, that will become, we'll know that exactly once we put it out for bid and we actually get a bid. Right. And the SWIFT money, the SWIFT grant, that, that comes off of that? It, it will if we get the if grant. If we get the grant. And, and as, our, as Bob and I have talked in the past, it could be, they could give us the whole 5 million or they could give us 3 million, they could give us a million. Anything they give us will be a benefit, but they, the SWIFT organization, they look at your application and several factors and determine, okay, do you qualify for this amount? And, and one of, I think Rob can talk into this more, but I think one of the things that will help us qualify is us getting under contract to say that we can be done with the plans because that's one of the criteria. Correct, Rob? Yes, sir. To, be, to get the grant. So I'm hoping that moves us up the rung to get us the $5 million. And the money with Jefferson County is still not sure what you've requested. No, yeah, and Bob has written a letter, which you have in your packets, I think, uh, requesting that from the county. And Rob and I are going to be meeting with the county this Friday to go over some of the reasons they should give us the two and a half million for the benefit of everyone, because all the city residents are county residents also. So, so a, little, a little bit on that. I started having conversations with commissioners about a month ago. Uh, as this project was starting to really come um, to fruition. And then on July 14th, I uh, sent a formal letter to President of the Commissioners, Commissioner Dave Bramer, requesting two things, uh, that they financially support uh, the water improvement project using their ARP funds, which is an eligible use for ARP monies, uh, to the tune of about $2.5 million. We also requested that they financially support the engineering study with the Army Corps of Engineers for flood risk mitigation. Um, and uh, we are on their agenda this Friday to make a formal request because they need to incorporate both of these things into their local plan that would then be presented to County Council for the use of their ARP money, which they received about $6.4 million. City of Madison provides, as Brian was indicating, water to approximately two-thirds of Jefferson County. This is a county-wide project, and, uh, we, and it's been probably 20 years since the city, the city has invested in its drinking water infrastructure to this extent, and is much needed, badly needed, and it's been you know, 13 years since the city has addressed its water rates. So there's still a lot of things, to, uh, no pun intended, but it's a fluid situation because <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts. No uh, pun intended. The, S the, the SRF, <laughs> the SWIF, the Jefferson County Commissioners, and but we've also got to methodically approach it so that we can position ourselves in the best uh, light possible to be ready to proceed by the end of this year. And so what's on the agenda today is an approval of an amendment to our uh, owner engineer agreement with Commonwealth Engineers 
to uh, start, or I should say, be prepared, subject to a notice of proceed, uh, notice to proceed from the Board of Public Works, be prepared to start the design work uh, on this project. All right, we can get Rob up here and he can yep. answer any questions you have. So let's, let's ask uh, Rob maybe to outline, uh, A, what the scope of the project is, and then what we are, what we what we would be approving today with regard to the amendment to this engine, owner engineer agreement. Sure, um, you guys actually stole a lot of my thunder. <laughs> the uh, you know what we have before the board today is is the amendment to the original contract. The original contract, if you recall, um, was started about two years ago, and that was to assemble the city's basically 20 year plan and, and in that plan um, we outlined all the areas of priority that needed to be addressed um, many many meetings with Brian and his team to kind of zero in on what what would give us the most bang for the buck now and, and what we could set off to the side and plan for down the road um, as Brian mentioned uh, the, the the end of the the end of the story is that we landed on about a 13 million dollar project okay and and it, it's really got three components um, we had a, uh, a third party consultant come in and uh, we drained every single one of the city's water tanks so we did a thorough inspection which was long overdue to be done so we did that to all six of the city's water tanks um, identified things that needed to be addressed upgrades We also vetted your existing water treatment facilities, and and without getting into the weeds of it, you have two well fields. You have a west side of town, River City well field, and then you have one on the east side, but they each have their own independent treatment facility. So um, there's some upgrades with respect to your chemical feed systems that need to be addressed, um, some upgrades with respect to metering so that we can more accurately measure, monitor, and document all the water that comes in and goes out, um, and then the distribution system, and that's really the big, the big piece of it. Is you know, it, it, I'm sure it's it, it, it goes without saying, but there's they're dealing with water breaks because you have a, an older system, and there are, there are areas that have been identified, you know, upwards of, of 20,000 feet of pipe throughout various locations here in the city, um, where the water mains are either undersized or they're just old and they're subject to frequent breaking and we want to get in there and we want to get them up to date. So um, when all said and done, we're looking about two and a half million dollars on the tanks, um, a little over a million dollars at your water treatment plant, and then about six million dollars for the line work. So that with all the soft costs that go into it, the engineering, the, the legal, the, the financial folks, your bond council, um, wage monitoring and labor standards that has to be done during construction. Um, we call we just reference those as non-construction costs. That's how we came up with about a $13 million project. Um, if you recall, it's been about a month, I think, but um, board pre previously authorized us to go ahead and submit it to um, SRF for funding consideration to make sure we got on their project priority list that was done and we got on the list okay so now they're in process of reviewing our plan um, in support of that you know this the city got ARP money well the state did too okay so if you if you understand what your local ARP dollars are that came out of a much larger part that was allocated to the state and of that much larger part they've been taken what amounts to 50 million dollars this year and 50 million dollars next year and they set that aside for a grant program for all the communities throughout the state focusing on infrastructure improvements all right it could be water it could be wastewater in our case we made application and we submitted it last week um, to let them know that we would request their assistance in helping us fund this 13 to 15 million dollar project through some amount of money from that grant program okay um, the the mayor is is very accurate in in that um, it's going to be competitive you know there's over 200 applications that were submitted 
early last week and the deadline wasn't until Thursday. Um, it's gonna be very competitive and they grade it kind of on a scale, but one of the big ticket items that they wanna see is regionalization, okay? So there's nothing says regional, regionalization more for us than being able to say we supply water two thirds of Jefferson County, all right? So we, we're hopeful that we can check that box. Um, and then you've got the, the public health and, and safety and welfare component that always gets taken into consideration. And, and we could check that box too by making sure we have new and reliable treatment facilities and we're doing our best to mitigate outages due to main breaks and those types of things. So we think we're positioned in pretty good shape. Um, and then lastly, what they like to see is a local match component. Um, and we're going about that from kind of two different angles. We're leveraging the fact that we've already got an SRF application in and we we know that to support our whatever the rate increase ends up being that we're going to have some loan component to it. So we're leveraging that application but we're also leveraging the fact that the mayor has reached out to the county commissioners to help us. And, and again, um, the Indiana Finance Authority who's managing this this grant program, that's what they want to see. They want to see communities and, and other governmental entities using their their AI, AARP money, their local money, to leverage with these applications that are going in. So when you add all that up, you know, we like the position that we're in. You know, as Brian mentioned, nothing's guaranteed, but I think we made a pretty good case. And we're gonna take that a step further this Friday. We're gonna go meet the commissioners hat in hand and let them know that we need their help and uh, uh, hopefully that works out because again whatever we get from the county is going to be offset some of that project cost whatever we get potentially from the state is going to offset some of that project cost and the, the net result from all that is a lower <coughs> to reduce the rates. So um, that was kind of long-winded but what I have today is, is, is as was mentioned earlier an amendment to our original contract that was to assemble the report. So now this is the next step, all right? This is the, this gets us into design and all the field work, the survey and the soil borings. Um, the amendment's also inclusive of bidding phase and permitting phase, and it takes it all the way through construction, um, having somebody on site full time to monitor the construction and, and, and inspection, and then also post-construction assistance because we know when you take, especially in these larger construction projects that even when you think you're calling it done, you're gonna still spend some time chasing some things down. So that's in there too. Um, our amendment is in the amount of, of $1,545,000. Again, that gets us from preliminary final design, all the field work through bidding, construction, and inspection. Um, one of the requirements for this SWIFT program that we've made application for is if we are to receive any money from the state, um, they'll have they'll issue what they what they're referring to right now as tentative award in early August. And I think the last published date that I saw was August sixth. Given the number of applications that were submitted, I wouldn't be surprised if that date got pushed a little bit. But you can expect on or around <coughs> the first or second week of August to to likely find out if we were successful in, in soliciting those funds. If we are awarded any of the grant money, um, the clock starts ticking, and and the next and, and the next box that the state's going to want us to check off is is your design done by December 31st of this year. Now that's aggressive. It's a fairly large magnitude project, but. But we believe, given the work that's gone into <coughs> assembling the, the planning document, that we've got a good head start. So we should be able to, to meet that deadline. Um, requesting this, the, the board's approval today just better positions us to make sure we can hit the ground running. Um, but we have to have design done by the end of the year. Um, and we have to have our permit applications. All of our permits that, that we're going to need have to have those submitted by the end of the year as well. Um, Box number two that has to be checked is we've got to have bids in hand by April of next year, okay? So it's critical to get the design done and get the permits in hand so we can go bid the job. And then the last box to check is going to be um, a water contract, and that will likely occur on or around June of next year. So 
what we are requesting um, this board's authorization on today is um, approval of our amendment to position us to be ready to hit the ground running. However, um, you know, my recommendation is hold off issuing any kind of notice to proceed to actually start the work until we hear from the state <coughs> on whether or not we are successful and or the county if we're successful in, in soliciting their participation and helping fund our project. So no work's gonna get started against this amendment yet until you guys reconvene and issue a notice to proceed. Um, but at least getting it approved now gets us <coughs> In to the point where we're ready to go when, when you guys say Jonathan will we'll take off. So it's a lot of information. Um, what questions do you have? Have you built in a margin there to take care of inflation? Yes. Sir. Right now there's a, you know, as you well know, inflation is taking off. So there's some margin there. there there's a yeah. bid environment factor in there, absolutely. And it's 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 the inflation, it's plus contingency. There is a 10% construction contingency built into it, but there's also a bid environment factor on top of that. So when we're looking at big picture costs, raw materials right now, um, pipe, valves, all that kind of stuff, we're seeing pricing go up. And the way these, this project is, is likely gonna be funded, it's gonna be subject to American Iron and Steel requirements, which further drives pricing. Okay. Is that similar to Davis-Bacon? Yeah, Davis-Bacon wages will also be required for the contractor to pay their, their employees. What's the time period for this project, assuming we get well contract to be awarded next June, you said? We would issue a notice to proceed on or around June of next year once all the financing's been secured and the funds have been released. And uh, I would expect on the on the on the short end about a twelve month construction duration. It could go to maybe thirteen or fourteen months. It just depends on what kind of feedback we're seeing from some of the contractors when they're assembling their bids. But you're looking at at least a, a one year construction period, at, you know, starting next June, kind of similar to the sewer project that we finished a couple years back. You might have to that they're gonna be probably separate projects. Separate yeah, I would just add while, while, while you guys are chatting that, there's another part of all of this too, which is the financing side of things. So there's so many different moving parts. At the end of the day, we need to know how much support we're gonna get locally, what level of grants we're going to get, finalize our cost study, and then go to city council with uh, with proposed and board of public works with proposed rates in order to support the financing uh, that we'll have to uh, borrow to pay for the project. So there's a, there's still quite a few steps. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts to it, but you can't wait till the very very end and then pull it all together. It is there's a sequence to all of this. And there's, again, it's a lot of moving parts that are unknown, but there are deadlines attached to each of them. So we have to do the best that we can, particularly getting, getting the um, uh, uh, non-debt financing sources secured, because that will then essentially pave the way for finalizing cost studies, the, rates, the rate study, excuse me, and then bringing that in for approval to city council to borrow the money. That's, yeah, yeah it couldn't Worst case scenario, we would have to finance the entire project. Worst case scenario. That, that is worst case scenario, but then yeah. at that point, you're not under quite the aggressive schedule that's going to come with getting grant money. Right. So I would, I would move that we approve the amendment as presented with a notice to proceed uh, at, uh, to be considered at a future Board of Public Works meeting upon hearing the level of financial support we would receive from SWIFT grant application and Jefferson County Commissioners. Is that okay? That's perfect. Okay. Mayor, I'll second that motion. Okay. <clears throat> Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Rob, thank you. I have the originals, I'll circle up if you have the name. What's that? I have the originals, so I'll circle up after the name. Thank you. Okay. I'm trying to pace myself. No pun intended. Mm -hmm.
Uh, Nicole is here to discuss PACE applications. Yes, there are several. Uh, so we'll go through uh, each one with before photos. Uh, so the first application uh, for approval is by SEI Real Estate at 711 713 East Main Street for the amount of 7500 uh, they are working on tuck pointing and uh, removing the lead paint. The next application is uh, Gary Greeno at 1026 West Main Street for the amount of $950. He is working on his front porch. Uh, the uh, roof part, um, ceiling, be board, fascia, um, and then the floor itself. The next application is Richard and Kathy Taylor at 1014 West Main, or sorry, that's their mailing address, 1010 West Main Street for the amount of 7500 they are working on the smart siding and trim. The next application is Matt Finley, 615 Mulberry Street uh, for the amount of 25,000. Uh, he's doing extensive work from tuck pointing, painting, windows, doors, siding, trim, and electrical service. The next application is Dave Patterson, 107 East 5th Street, for the amount of $7,500. He is working on uh, the wood siding, wood windows, uh, doors, half round gutters, and lighting fixtures. Okay, that's just off of West Street then, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next application is Mike and Melissa Prickett, 919 West 1st Street, for the amount of 7500 They are working on uh, windows, doors, and siding. The next application is MPP Reynolds, owned by Mike and Melissa Prickett at 927 West 1st Street. Their request is for the amount of 7,500. On this structure, they're working on um, the deck, um, gutters, chimney, siding, windows, doors, The next application is Kimberly Taylor for Jefferson County Transitional Service Group uh, at uh, one five, uh, 515 East 2nd or 309 St. Michael's. It has two addresses. Uh, their request is for $2,771. On this structure, they are working on the siding, gutters, storm doors, and painting. This will be another haven? Yes. Mm -hmm. Transitional home? Okay. Next application is Howard and Lisa Cutshaw, 907-909 West 2nd Street, for the amount of $7,500. Uh, their request is for windows and tuck pointing. Um, they're doing obviously other work outside of the grant. They've already started that part. Nicole, I'm surprised why that one wouldn't qualify for a dilapidated structure. It would they have if they had applied before they started, but by the time she applied, it was no longer dilapidated. Oh. So they worked most of the structural issues. Okay. But, they, but we only gave them one grant 
Yes. Which is one for each address? That's all she applied separately, for. Separately? Okay, separate yeah. addresses? Yep, she okay. wanted to keep them together, make it easy, one application. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, the next application is uh, Gary Leiter at uh, 407 East 3rd Street for the amount of $2,593. He is working on the front steps uh, there as well as tuck pointing and painting. The next application is Jim Pruitt. 310 Jefferson Street for the amount of 7500 So most of this work is in the rear of the building? Uh, actually, he's applied for the windows okay. and uh, painting of the building as well as gutters. The one next to it, he's working primarily on the back, okay. which already has a grant. And the final application is Arnold and Karen Conway at 109 East Main Street for the amount of $7,500. She is working on the upper window, replacing the second, store, second third story window, um, and then painting the front of the building, as well as removing the awning. Nicole, what's the total here? Uh, grants requested. Should have known you were going to ask that question. Hold on. <laughs> well, while she's uh, looking at that, the Redevelopment Commission last week approved an additional contribution to the PACE program because of its uh, success in the amount of $250,000 and the leveraging that that investment is making uh, relative to the money we're investing versus private capital is almost three and a half to one. So we've seen that a steady trend in increasing that, which is one of our intent uh, intentions when we supersized the, and modified the PACE guidelines last year. Uh, happy to see that uh, honestly five or six or seven of these projects that are hosted here today are either in the targeted area uh, or dilapidated structures. So uh, you can just see the difference that it's making not only with those properties, but the property values around those properties are all in increasing. So I think it's a worthwhile investment. So the total amount requested uh, for this round was $76,314. Okay. So what you need a motion from us on the uh, approval of the $76,314 of the grant funds? Yes. Um, I motion we uh, Grant the motion for the seven six thousand three hundred fourteen dollars for the pace applicants. Okay. I'll second that. Board any discussion? You know, yeah. I know there's huge improvements up there on the you know the Third Street side there at Walnut, and this just adds to the neighborhood. And it's just you know it's a fine neighborhood. It's doing good there every day. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Uh, any additional discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Face amendments. Okay. I have two amendments to existing applications. The mm -hmm. first is um, an amendment filed by Jim Pruitt for his application at 306 Jefferson Street. Um, he's requesting to increase uh, the investment as well as the grant amount. Um, his increase would increase his grant amount by $11,115.57, uh, making his total PACE grant $20,847.07. Um, his additional work will include uh, four windows and then rebuilding the rear addition that was um, previously demolished. Um, Jim originally submitted his application right at the time that we were adding the dilapidated structures grant. Um, which is why he's asking for this amendment because he didn't have the opportunity to include this amount when he applied. And you have one other amendment? Yes. And the second amendment uh, was filed by John Schering uh, for his grant at 1063 West Main Street. Uh, due to the increase in lumber prices, um, he's needing to put off the replacement of his siding. 
but is planning to do the rest of the work. Uh, that would uh, change his grant amount from $7,500 to $3,240.44. So we have one increase and one reduction? Yes. Okay. Nicole, I move that we uh, approve both amendments as presented for 306 Jefferson and 1063 West Main. I second the mayor's motion. Okay. Any discussion, board? All favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. And one final. Two finals. Oh, two finals. Excuse me. Uh, the first final is for 841 West Main Street. Um, Tony Beals, uh, he's worked on this building. Uh, these are some before pictures. Uh, most of it included the windows, which has been a huge increase for the tenant in there. Um, they didn't previously have that opportunity. Uh, he's filed all his paperwork accordingly um, and completed his grant um, according to his application. So his uh, disbursement request is for the amount of 7500 And the second final is Bill Barnes at uh, 108 East Third Street. Um, he had a three-part application to work on tuck pointing his side porch and then uh, reinstall a door that had previously been converted to a window. He also painted nice. his building, uh, which I think looks great. Um, he's already received one disbursement, uh, so his disbursement uh, this round will be $3,750. Uh, his grant is also completed according to his application. Looks great. I'll make a motion to approve the finals uh, at 841 West Main and 108 East Third. I'll second that motion. Board, any additional discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? These look fantastic. It's a great making, program. You make it nice and clean, safe, and beautiful, aren't Definitely. you? Definitely. Trying to. So we do have funds left uh, thanks to the Red Redevelopment Commission. So we're accepting applications for the next round until August 2nd. And what has, uh, you probably have this uh, in total recall, but what has been our total funded PACE uh, <coughs> applications in 2021 thus far? Our total this far, uh, I don't have a, like the number of applications. The dollar amount. Uh, the dollar amount. Um, the city has put in uh, with the Redevelopment Commission 442000 which was matched by uh, about a million and a half by uh, private funds. Fantastic. Go ahead. Thank you. But not only, I would just say that not only are we improving property values, but that money that is being invested in those properties also cycles through our local economy. Mm -hmm. So there's a multiplier uh, effect and a benefit to the economy in addition to rising property values and uh, promoting you know, our key initiative of clean, safe, and beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Good job. Thank you. Keeping contractors busy. Everybody's busy. Making <laughs> Making it hard for some of us to get work done. Get, <laughs> to hire <laughs> contractors. So. <laughs> okay, moving on. There was one other uh, piece of new business that that I wanted to bring before you today, and mention this: that uh, at tomorrow city council meeting, we will ask city council <coughs> to approve a resolution supporting 2021 flood recovery efforts. And in, and in summary, let me read, it's okay if I read this since this isn't a, a uh, Board of Public Works resolution, but I'm going to ask at the end of this for a motion to be made to provide a favorable recommendation to City Council to adopt this resolution. Whereas the City of Madison recognizes that on June 18, 2021, the City of Madison had a significant rain event that negatively impacted certain areas throughout the City of Madison. Whereas the City of Madison Common Council continues to support flood recovery efforts by those negatively impacted, 
And whereas the City of Madison Common Council desires to support the flood recovery with the following measures. Trash and debris removal related to flood shall continue to be free of charge to those in the affected area. No discontinuation of water services shall occur for the next six months for those who reside in the affected area and have completed a disaster intake form in the City of Madison. All those who reside in or operate a business in the affected area may have their water, sewer, and trash fees waived from July 2021 to December 2021, so long as they have completed a disaster intake form in the City of Madison and requested the waiver from the utility billing office. And then a fourth one will be requested, which is the waiver of building permit fees for all of the reconstruction efforts in the affected area. Whereas the City of Mass and Common Council believes it is important to explore all resources to assist with future mitigation of a disaster of this nature, therefore desires to support a matching grant available through the Army Corps of Engineers to begin a comprehensive plan to assist with future efforts to mitigate flooding in the affected areas and to establish a committee to evaluate the merits of forming a long-term recovery group. Uh, now, therefore, it be resolved by the Common Council of City of Madison that they would adopt the proposed resolution, support the grant application efforts, and uh, you know pursue all all efforts uh, necessary to assist the, in the 2021 flood recovery efforts. So. Board, what I'm asking you to do today is uh, make a motion to endorse this resolution and uh, give it a favorable recommendation to City Council that will be read and heard and hopefully voted on tomorrow night. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that the Board of Public Works make a favorable recommendation for this resolution to the City Council for its passage. Thank you. Um, second David's motion. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, Board. And moving on to claims. Mayor had an opportunity to review the claims. I'll make a motion that the claims be approved and submitted. I'll second David's motion. Yeah. Board, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, under mayor's comments, not a whole lot uh, to add. Um, we're very, very busy with uh, a lot of different initiatives, infrastructure, um, paving grants, water project, huge economic development uh, grant submission that's due tomorrow that I think is gonna be very transformational for the city of Madison and Jefferson County if we are funded through the redevelopment authority um, we're also embarking on our Main Street project. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor McGee wanted me to mention that that the start of that project's been delayed uh, by a week. We'll start next week because our we have some utility work going on on Main Street now, and then our contractor is also repairing a piece of equipment. So we should see that project begin next week. And there's still a lot of parts to it. Uh, frankly, uh, the resurfacing aspect, the repair of damaged areas across that spectrum of road, and then uh, also striping patterns and uh, just managing the project, which will which will occur over the course of the next uh, four to six weeks this summer. So the community has already been made aware of this, but we'll reiterate, uh, please be looking for uh, the no parking signs uh, in the affected areas. We are doing it in stages, so it'll have minimal impact uh, to those who are uh, traversing on Main Street and parking on Main Street. Uh, also mentioned is it's kind of <coughs> partially outlined in the resolution that we have uh, just continue to work diligently and every single day on flood recovery efforts as well as future flood risk mitigation efforts. Uh, we are we are seeing some you know, promising um, uh, feedback from the Department of Natural Resources and the Army Corps of Engineers, but in addition to meeting with the commissioners on Friday to ask for their support for the water project, we are also, also asking for their support of the flood risk management uh, mitigation project, and we're asking them to support uh, the initial preliminary engineering uh, costs with the Army Corps of Engineers to the tune of about $150,000. We've budgeted approximately 400 
$50,000 for uh, flood mitigation and uh, we would like their support of that because that was also a city slash county countywide event that uh, you know affected areas both in the county and in, and in the city limits. So a lot going on public works and infrastructure wise and I'll pause there and see if the board has anything to add. Mayor, I, I, on social media I, I've seen some things where the city has been criticized for the uh, on the flood response I guess. Could you explain maybe a little bit that any work that's done out there in the mitigation work has to be approved by the Corps of Engineers and I mean the city just can't go in and make changes. Well the city has worked every day non-stop uh, particularly in the emergency element of the flood we were out there with our emergency response in the middle of the night uh, doing water rescues and then immediately started the cleanup and, and that has been an ongoing process not a day has gone by where the city has not uh, contributed to the recovery efforts and we continue to do those things that will not only help support the emergency need by uh, bringing together all the stakeholders and, and human service organizations to provide support there, but also clean up and future risk mitigation. But uh, the city is responsible for floodplain administration uh, and for FEMA as well as DNR regulations. And there is, there are thresholds under the um, uh, floodplain regulations at the state and federal levels that are incorporated into our local floodplain administration ordinance that requires damage assessments. We've probably gone through four separate damage assessments for property damage in the affected area. Uh, Jefferson County Emergency Management Agency, Indiana Department of Home Homeland Security, uh, SBA for the governor's disaster declaration and then also the DNR, DNR damage assessments performed by the city of Madison in compliance with our local floodplain uh, administration ordinance. All that's required in order to determine what level of damage assistance we would qualify for but also what level of permits would be required as people start to uh, rebuild their homes and the floodplain uh, administration ordinance stipulates what the DNR permitting requirement is and it's based on a percentage of damage to the structure so if there's over 50 percent damage uh, and you are in the floodway you would need a DNR permit in addition to a local building permit so you know we advised the community of that at our town hall meeting a couple of weeks ago uh, the building and planning department has been out in the neighborhood uh, doing those individual damage assessments. We've also been working with a uh, statewide uh, volunteer organization to assist in uh, the disaster recovery. They've been doing uh, mold and mildew abatement, demucking, and then our street department has you know, uh, removed about 140 tons of debris from the affected area free of charge to the transfer station. So. We're, we're doing a lot um, every single day and, and now you know our focus has been shifting more toward future flood risk uh, mitigation and identifying the engineering and the costs associated with that so that over time we can see if there are resources out there as well as infrastructure we can construct that hasn't not hasn't been considered before and that's what that's the stage we're in now I, I think that uh, We'll do whatever we can to help help people there, and uh, uh, mostly we're working with Salvation Army, American Red Cross, VOAD, uh, the churches in the community to bring emergency relief for food, shelter, clothing, and those types of things to the uh, residents who live there. And then what we're doing on the building and planning side is floodplain administration and risk management. So there's a, a tremendous amount of of lifting that's being done by the city, the state. And then last week, the entire week, we had Indiana Department of Homeland Security, as well as the U.S. Small Business Administration, 
They were uh, set up for a disaster assistance center at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, working with the community in applying for flood relief. When it comes to the, when it comes to the waterways that are feeding the affected area, that's that work has to be coordinated with the Corps of Engineers. Yes. Uh, Fire Chief uh, Bill DeVries did a comprehensive evaluation of Crooked Creek tributary last week. We've been documenting the damage to it, uh, significant damage in, the, in the, uh, the creek bed, retaining walls, some discharge areas that feed into Crooked Creek, and we're doing everything we can to document it uh, and, and go through the necessary channels in order to get the permits for cleaning it as well as uh, you know, identifying any future risk mitigation that might be possible that would change the outcome in a, another storm event like we had. It's complicated, it's multi-jurisdictional, it's expensive, and it takes a lot of time. time, time. There, there are no quick results, and, uh, but I think we're gonna be in a better position in the future because of the actions that we're taking today that had not previously been explored. Thank you for explaining. You're welcome. There's a lot to it. Uh, Chief, I see you here. Do you have any updates for Board of Public Works? Be real brief. Okay. Happy to be bored. Uh, just trying to keep up with uh, Nicole's pace on the neighborhood improvements. <laughs> <laughs> Clean, safe, and good. Albeit, mine's ever so slight. The four and block of East Third is uh, the curbing on the uh, south side of that street is still yellow from where next to the old Nicholson School. I think some folks do park there, but I, I should like to respectfully ask the board. Was I had a note here from the neighbors up there wanting me to ask you to look into that yes. situation. Because more and more people are moving yes. because of the coast project onto Third Street Street. The need for the parking yeah, is there. Yeah, just an awesome block. Some folks have two or three cars that are like yep. to park them in that area, so I would respectfully ask the board to remove that. It's private property now. I think there's some non-profit organizations in there, but I, yes. I think that was established option for the school, the school buses, and it's no longer needed in my opinion. Right. So. And they're, uh, they're doing uh, on-site parking there. They at are. Yes. They are. Yeah, they park up in the lot. And yeah. I definitely don't think it's needed for that building any longer, so I would ask the board to... Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we remove the yellow striping there on 3rd Street uh, by Eggleston to allow public parking in that area. It's no longer needed for busing. Parking. I'll second that motion. Board, any additional discussion? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Chief, anything else? That's it. Chief, may I ask an update on, yes. uh, the, since we're talking about uh, the, yellow, the yellow curb painting, where we are with 4th Street and uh, down not, down near the uh, Perched and Craigmont um, areas? Yeah, I don't know if that's been uh, placed. I don't think it's been. Not. Uh, okay. Is that something we, the notes are passed on to Gene, is that correct? To what? You're all, on Street the, Park? Uh, okay. Yeah, on the no parking that was approved, uh, of the old lines that were approved on Jefferson Street. I think sometimes she. That was, that was done, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll check with Gina to see what the street park is. Okay, thank there. you. I also had one of the guys ask me to sit down there at the end of West Street there. Uh, the stop lights, or stop signs are there. When we were doing the approach, they had a, a solar powered electronic sign that would flash as you approached. He was asking because several people have seen, seen kind of blow through there. You know, this what long, intersection are you talking about? West Street oh, and Bond Drive, right there. Oh, right here. here. You know, it wasn't a stop for a hundred years, and it's still a lot of people don't notice. Here's one that we, maybe we can look into putting the flashing type of stop light that the state used up here. On. Yeah, you know, we don't have those, but those are very effective. You're talking about yeah. the outline of the stop mm -hmm. sign itself flashing, mm -hmm. and those are extremely effective. I, yeah. In my opinion, they grab your yeah, they do. So yeah, yeah. if you just look into maybe the cost and okay. maybe somebody look. Certainly will. All right. Those guys down there, they watch that stuff. And, they, and, and they're concerned about the kids sure. across there. Actually, yeah. It's a busy corner anymore. Yeah, very busy with the busy corner. The parks department is uh, going to install a gate 
uh, at the Hargan Matthews Park so the children can't run out into the street. So they're working on that um, as well. And then we already approved extending the yellow curbing yes. by the boat ramp yes. entrance to, so that people that are turning up on West and Vaughn would have proper clearance. I will say, yeah, I will say, Gina, I guess they're working on that, but it's kind of slow moving. It yeah. should be pretty, pretty soon to get that done. Everything got pushed right there around the regatta it time. Did. And I know the street department was busy and short, short-handed. They did a remarkable job of the regatta. Yeah. Like the carrier flood and the regatta. Yeah. 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 Heavy yeah. weather. Thank you. Thank you, too. Brian, anything else? No, sir. Thank you. Board, anything else for the cause? I make a motion with adjourn. Next meeting will be Monday. Oh, I'm sorry, David had something. Sorry. August the no. 2nd, David had something? No. Okay, you can second his motion. I'll second his motion. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hey, how, how, how good is this coming through back there? I can't hear myself. Is your meal okay? It's a little old today. You're a sick child. But, oh, we forgot Matt. Did he have anything? No, no, you didn't hurt anything.